The Pentagon is discussing a response in case Donald Trump wants to use the military within the U.S. for law enforcement. Officials are considering various scenarios, according to CNN. As the publication reminds, Trump stated that he is ready to use the military for law enforcement within the country and mass deportations. He also mentioned his intention to appoint loyalists to his government and carry out purges over corruption in the U.S. national security structure. We are all preparing and planning for the worst-case scenario, but the reality is that we don't know how this is going to play out yet, an unnamed Pentagon official explained. CNN clarifies that Trump's victory in the election also raised questions within the Pentagon about what would happen if the president were to give an illegal order, especially if his people in the Department of Defense failed to take action in response. Troops are compelled by law to disobey unlawful orders, another Pentagon official noted. The California state government is prepared to counter unlawful actions by Republican Donald Trump if he takes office as U.S. President, states California Governor and Democratic Party Representative Gavin Newsom on X. California is ready to fight. I just called an emergency special session to help bolster our legal resources and protect our state against any unlawful actions by the incoming Trump administration, Newsom wrote. According to him, the state government is prepared to oppose the Trump administration on several critical issues, from fundamental civil rights and reproductive freedom to combating climate change. We refuse to turn back the clock and allow our values and laws to be attacked, the California governor emphasized. Recall the U.S. presidential election took place on November the 5th. Kamala Harris, from the Democratic Party and Donald Trump from the Republican Party were the candidates for the White House. Trump won the election, receiving over 270 electoral votes sufficient to secure the U.S. presidency. Even before the vote count was complete, Trump declared himself the newly elected president. In his first rally after the election, he made several statements including a promise to end all wars. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan voiced hope that conflicts in the Middle East could come to an end through collaboration with recently elected U.S. President Donald Trump. Trump was elected the 47th President of the United States on Wednesday, an extraordinary comeback for a former president who refused to accept defeat four years ago, sparked a violent insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, was convicted of felony charges and survived two assassination attempts. In our phone conversation with the elected President of the United States, Mr. Trump, we congratulated him on his historic election victory and drew attention to the massacres in Gaza and Lebanon, Erdogan said. We expect our dear friend Trump to abandon the erroneous policies of the previous administration in his second term as President. We sincerely believe that Mr. President will do his part in ending the wars, and we sincerely hope so. Hanımefendiler, Amerika'nın seçilmiş başkanı Sayın Trump'la yaptığımız telefon görüşmesinde hem kendisini tarihi seçim zaferinden dolayı tebrik ettik hem de Gazze ve Lübnan'daki katliama dikkat çektik. Değerli dostum Trump'tan ikinci başkanlık döneminde eski yönetimin hatalı politikalarını terk etmesini bekliyoruz. Sayın Başkan'ın savaşları sonlandırma noktasında elini taşın altına koyacağına yürekten inanıyor. Bunu da samimiyetle temenni ediyoruz. Ukrainian defenders likely used the rare guided shell Copperhead during battles in the Kursk region. It was produced in the United States in the 1970s. According to Defense Express, the agency notes that the M712 Copperhead is a representative of the first generation of guided shells, making its appearance in modern combat unexpected. According to media reports, Ukrainian defenders employed the M712 Copperhead to target a metal communication tower located east of Sudza, 
Three such shells were used for the strike launched from M777 howitzers. Of course, this creates big problems for Russians. Defense Express states that the M712 Copperhead is guided to its target using a laser beam. Its effective range is up to 16 kilometers and it weighs 62.4 kilograms. Serial production of the shells began in 1978 and they are no longer manufactured. Data available indicates that there were up to 20,000 M712 Copperhead shells in the US as of 1995. Additionally, in 2017, information emerged regarding the transfer of several hundred munitions to the Lebanese army. At the beginning of 2024, Ukraine faced significant issues with ammunition shortages. The main reason was the suspension of aid from the US, as Congress was unable to allocate funding for this purpose. However, the situation with artillery has since improved. Defense Express emphasizes that it's currently unknown where the Ukrainian Defense Forces could have obtained the M712 Copperhead from or how many. Nonetheless, the very option of using these guided munitions to strike down Russian forces offers its own utility, especially considering Russia's active use of electronic warfare systems, hindering with GPS guided shells yet useless against laser beam navigation. Earlier, we extensively covered the use of Krasnopol precision-guided projectiles by the Russian army and the methods Ukrainians employ to counter them. This Russian-made guided shell is believed to be a result of the USSR simply borrowing technological solutions from the American M712 Copperhead for its own product, officially adopted by the Soviet military in 1986. For hitting small targets, artillery had to lay down barrages in hopes that at least one round would hit the mark. Guided munitions offer the prospect of one round, one kill, which evens the economics a bit. Despite the sanctions, Russia used Western manufactured components to produce its S-70 Okotnik drone that was struck over Donetsk region in early October, main directorate of Ukraine's intelligence stated on Friday. In a statement posted on its official Telegram channel, the main directorate revealed that in particular, microelectronics and other technological components manufactured by US, German and Swiss companies were found in the Russian drone that was downed over the city of Konstantinovka in eastern Donetsk region on October 5. The agency made the statement after thoroughly examining the S-70 Okotnik, known as Hunter drone, that was downed near Konstantinovka. Russia had four items of S-70 drones, which costs about $15 million each, the main directorate of intelligence said. The drones have been used during attacks on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. The drone is classified as an attack and reconnaissance drone. The downing of S-70 drone is a major loss for the Russian Air Force, which has already lost more than 100 combat aircraft, including the Su-57 fighter jet, during nearly three years of the war in Ukraine. Hunter drone performed its maiden flight in 2019 and its first footage was recorded at an airfield in Novosibirsk.